All right, uh, we're back with part three um, for June the 16th. Um, I realized that I had not listed number six. <laughs> I listed five things and then I went uh, to do something else in the house. I've got some laundry going and I came back upstairs and I forgot to add six. But six is a great one. Um, on the survey, they found that of the top six things that people had in their bucket list, the desire to do a daring activity um, was the, the sixth, became in the sixth most uh, frequent of those um, items. And 15% of participants responded um, to this. Um, we um, will hear in a minute uh, what age group. You won't be surprised, I think, when you hear the age group. But I've always um, been in awe of people who um, want to do something very risky, uh, people who want to climb um, a mountain such as um, El Capitan, you know, on the rocks and don't want to use any ropes, just bare hands and bare feet and, and things like that. Just, um, I can't imagine uh, wanting to take that level of a risk. Um, there are some things that would be certainly less risky than that, but that still might be difficult for me to imagine. And I wonder about you, if you're a risk taker, um, I like to be kind of, uh, I like to know all the boundaries and be, and be safe, um, be assured of safety as much as is possible. All right, I want to share some further research then that, um, that came from um, this study that I think you might find um, interesting. Um, first of all, of all of the people who listed travel as um, their number one thing uh, on their um, bucket list, the most common group of people who listed that were college-educated women. So ladies, we like to travel, <laughs> um, and apparently we like to do so more than the men. Um, that may not be true in your experience or in your household, but um, uh, women, I think, um, love to go after the experiences of travel, the beauty, the fun, the shopping, the food, <laughs> um, and, and the learning aspects as well, of course. College-educated women are most likely to have travel on their bucket lists. Unmarried men who are 65 and older were least likely to have travel on their bucket lists. Now this statistic um, made me kind of sad because I have a sense that perhaps these are men who um, <clears throat> maybe have lost their spouse um, to an early death, or there may be men, these may be men who are single due to divorce, um, and obviously there are some people who are single by choice. But at 65 years old, to, um, to not have goals for travel um, made me feel a little concerned for this group, and I would think that it would concern medical professionals um, when that older gentleman comes for their annual physical, um, I would think that doctors um, would want to know, you know, what are you looking for, forward to doing this year? Do you have any big plans? Um, and travel might be among those. Because if a person says, you know, there's nothing I want to do, or I don't care about going anywhere, um, I don't like to, um, you know, be with people on an airplane and you know, whatever, um, or a tour group, then this, these might be uh, little hints for medical professionals to maybe find out, is this person feeling hopeless? Is this first person feeling some depression? Do we need to treat um, a condition here? Um, not that everyone must travel to be happy, but you must have goals. You must have things that you look forward to. So that was an interesting finding. 
another one, and you can see I'm looking down at my laptop here. Uh, women younger than 33 were most likely to want to achieve milestones. Women younger than 33. Um, so that tells us that young ladies are setting high um, aspirations for themselves. They aspire to, which is kind of a word similar to desire, but it usually in, uh, involves the uh, willingness to work hard, aspiring to something. They aspire to um, perhaps graduate, perhaps um, own their own business, or um, have a leadership position in their business by a certain time in their life. They aspire to um, finding a spouse by a certain time and then maybe having a family by a, a certain time. More so than men, um, that for men is maybe not as frequent a goal on, um, on bucket lists. Unmarried people over 59 were least likely to have milestones on their bucket lists. So right there around my age, <laughs> um, 59, 60, right in there, people begin to maybe um, not say, oh, I want to um, live to see 75. I want to live to be um, 80. I want to um, have a um, meaningful part-time job in my 60s, you know. Um, again, something to um, think about for medical professionals to be sure that they are staying close in touch with those patients who are older and who might need more encouragement and perhaps even medical treatment to not feel depressed or down or hopeless. All right, 63 years old and over, folks were most likely to desire quality time with family and friends. That's fairly obvious because as we grow older, we know that we do have less time um, here on this earth and we begin to appreciate uh, the people in our, in our lives maybe more so than ever. Um, we also have more time on our hands where we can visit. We retire and part of retirement is that we hope that we will be able to um, travel, to be with family, to attend events of um, our family members, if you have grandchildren, you know, to attend all of their milestone events and so forth. So um, that's, that statistic that came out of the study did not surprise me. 16% um, of um, the participants listed their desire to, um, um, to be financially stable, and of that group, um, the um, most likely um, uh, cultural group um, across America were African Americans. African Americans most frequently um, included financial stability. Another interesting statistic, I think, because we do know that um, that uh, poverty among African Americans in the United States is quite high. Um, and um, sometimes there's an attitude among people, you know, that is, um, you know, oh, you know, um, these, this group of people really don't want to work hard or whatever. Um, certainly there are people who live among us of all um, cultures and races who do not wish to work very hard. They would prefer that the government support them. Um, but it is certainly not true for everyone. And um, the statistic um, that was uh, found, I think, actually, uh, you know, was an encouraging statistic to say that many among African Americans really do have a strong goal 
towards financial stability um, in this um, very um, dominant society that's very dominated by, um, um, particularly in the business aspect, um, by um, Caucasians. All right, and then of course, the last one, you can imagine which age group was most likely to list this. Um, 26 and younger. 26 and younger said, oh, we're gonna put something on our bucket list, or we already have something on our bucket list that is risky and daring, and we intend to accomplish that. All right, another um, aspect of this Stanford study and by the way, you can um, Google this simply um, bucket list study Stanford University and you will see these um, statistics and this information if you'd like. Share it with others. There was another aspect that was a part of the study or more of an, um, an extension of the study, I should say. And that is um, a letter, L-E-T-T-E-R, as you would get in the mail, um, a letter that matters. Um, that people um, were encouraged and are being encouraged to write. Now, it's sort of different from a bucket list in that a bucket list is um, more of just, um, just that, a bulleted list of things we want to do and um, that we put our mind and our focus on doing. Um, the letter that matters is encouraged for particularly um, people who are moving towards the uh, latter years of their lives to say to their families and friends, the things that matter and have mattered to me all of my life are the following things. I want you to know this about me in case you don't already know it. We've talked about legacies. Legacies are um, what we leave for the future generation to um, understand about us, okay? If you're an important person, your legacy is, you know, very big and, and, and can be read about um, in books and online and, and there are statues and there are markers and there are museums and so forth, okay? For regular people, um, our legacies are mainly going to be important to our family and to our circle of friends, the people that we have had influence um, with in our lives. And so the letter that matters becomes a part of our legacy. It helps uh, people who knew us to be certain that these are the things that we want them to um, understand and to even remember about us. Um, a letter that matters has to do with the things that we have um, accomplished and why we accomplished them and then the things that we would like to continue to accomplish the goals that we continue to have. And then it includes items about how we want the end of life to look. Those things that we can control about the end of our lives. Here's what matters to me. Here's what I would like for my family to do or not to do. Um, at the end of my life. This is a wonderful way for people to take some control over um, things that might seem um, scary uh, to us, especially when we think about the end of life and what that could look like. Um, by, by writing this kind of letter, it's sort of a way that we can, can take control um, it's not uh, the same exactly as having a will, um, because a will is a very you know, legal document that has lots of legal language in it. This is in our own words. This is expressing who we are and what we desire. So let's wrap up by thinking about how you and I um, can actually put focus to some of the things on our bucket lists 
so that we accomplish them. Well, one of the first things is to very clearly identify, all right? And instead of just saying, I want to travel, or instead of just saying, I want to um, reach important uh, milestones, but be specific. These are the places that I want to go, and even rank them in importance. Or these are the life events that I definitely want to reach. These are the financial um, um, specifics. I want to have enough financial stability to do this and this and this, okay? Because when we say being financially um, secure, what do we really mean by that? For some people, that means um, owning your home completely, having paid it off. For other people, it means having a home and being able to, excuse me, I had a little warning there on my, on my uh, battery, um, owning a home and being able to manage payments. So we need to think, you know, in terms of what are, what do we mean when we say financial security? So let's, let's be specific here. Um, what does that look like for you? Um, I think that's one step towards making the things on our bucket list realistic is to make them very specific and to um, put great thought into that. Can it change later? Of course. You may go back and you may say, you know what, I thought that I really wanted to, um, you know, visit uh, Norway, um, but after considering some other options, I, I think I'm going to move that down on my list, okay? So it's always subject to change. Another thing that would help us to accomplish our um, bucket lists is to share the list with others, to talk about it, um, to tell people these are important things because when we enter into conversation with people, we learn from their experiences, right? And we, um, we also take upon um, their encouragement or their discouragement. If you mention something that is really important to you and someone says, I need to tell you about my experience with that, um, they may be able to share both positive or some warnings for you. Um, when it comes to financial items, financial stability, um, it's important for us to, to speak with trusted financial experts uh, to say, these are my goals, but are they realistic? Would you have any um, input further to these goals that I have listed? Some things that I should do by the time I'm 35, 40, 55, so forth. Um, get that advice from, from um, knowledgeable um, people in the field. So um, reaching out to others and sharing with our family and friends our goals is another way to make them happen. And then also, before we go, I would say just looking at those goals and thinking about the time um, aspect. If I really want to do a certain thing, if I really want to learn how to do um, um, pottery, how to make pots and to paint them, and I would like to be able to sell them at festivals and craft markets, then what kind of time am I looking at? Is this something I can do in six months and then <clears throat> I'd be ready to, you know, to sell my pots? Probably not. Um, so I need to go and do some research. I need to talk to someone who's in this field, who does this. I need to maybe go watch people make pots and have conversations with them. I need to sort of set a plan. Well, this is something I can work on for the next two or three years while I'm also being a, a mother and I'm also taking classes in English or I'm doing these other things. Um, perhaps in two years, I could be ready to make and sell my own pots um, as a little side job. So we need to look at the time investment as well, of course, as the financial investment in these goals and decide if it's realistic and 
what the time frame, and then we need to make the time. We need to say, this is what I'm going to put my energy into for the next period of time. And, and really, and let our family members know, this is important to me, this is something I want to do. <clears throat> All right, time's up and I'm losing my voice, so I think it's time to stop. <laughs> um, gosh, this is maybe the last video. I, I guess we'll find out soon, huh? Um, thank you guys. Um, I love you all and I miss you uh, and I hope that um, we soon are together even if it's just casually to catch up with one another. Um, do take care.